Welcome back to another edition of the PegCast. I'm your host, Michael Pagani, joined alongside Flint Fiber, Marcus Gretz. Marcus, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Do I'm doing great, thanks. Thank you again for coming on. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me. You know, lots of people have turned towards Netflix uh, during quarantine. What have you been up to? Uh, a lot of the same, honestly. Um, you know, Tiger King. Uh, we watched Outer Banks, too. Grey's Anatomy, just <laughs> a lot of binge watching. And with that binge watching, have you, we talk, kind of talked uh, before getting on the air here, you're a huge soccer fan. When that returned, were you kind of binge watching those games? Oh, yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, I kind of liked it a little more. Um, it was interesting. Like, they'd play the uh, crowd speakers over and just a lot of random things, but you could hear the yelling, you know, the ball hit and, even watching UFC right now, like hearing all those punches and those smacks, like it's it's crazy. It's so surreal, you know. Yeah, yeah. It, it's kind of it's like you don't know you're in it until you're in it. Like it's like fighting on the ice. Like you don't notice what's happening, but then everyone else around you is like, "Oh my!" Like it's a fight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, getting into your story a bit here, who influenced you to start hockey? Um, funny story. So I'm actually the only person in my family to play hockey. Um, I'm originally from New Mexico, so there's not really a big hockey market out there. And, um, I, I, I think I saw it on TV one day and we got lucky, like the closest rink within like an hour or two was, uh, like five minutes from my house. So we signed up for figure skating lessons and yeah, I, I just fell in love with the game right away. And do you use, and do you use those figure skating lessons to your advantage in your game? Um, I don't really know if I noticed what I did back then. Now, um, the game's the game's changing so much. So, you know, for a bigger guy like me, it's a little bit harder to work on that stuff. But the fact I have that background makes it a little bit easier to work on that those uh, shifty moves and everything you see all the uh, young studs doing. Was there a player growing up who you wanted to model your game after? Yeah, uh, I used to play forward. I used to play up, so I, I was always smaller. But so I played forward, and I was always a huge fan of obviously Sidney Crosby. Um, there, there's been so many guys over the year I've modeled my game after. Just you know, as I've grown, as I put weight on, like it's it's always changing. And would you be able to speak upon your road to where you are today? Like some of the successes you've had, where are some of the challenges you faced? Yeah. Um, the road to where I am today has definitely been a long one. Um, so, so like I said, I lived in New Mexico until I was about nine years old. We moved to Colorado so I could play for the Colorado Thunderbirds. Uh, we lived in two different houses when I lived there. And then after about three years, we came to Michigan. Um, and then here I've lived in two different houses as well. And this is my sixth year living here. So it's uh, it's been long. <laughs> yeah, that does seem a long journey. You're hopping from place to place, and it seem, and it surely doesn't seem like that's going to stop anytime soon. No. Um, yeah, I definitely don't think it will. I mean, hopefully over the next few years I can find some solidarity somewhere. But um, right now, like, I, I love traveling. So, uh, you know, I'm young and just making the most of everything I can. What are some of your fondest memories uh, growing up as a hockey player? You know, I, I always used to talk about this with some of my other buddies who went off to play junior early. And um, you never really notice what it's like playing AAA until until you're done. Like, um, you know, those memories you make driving with your parents or, um, you know, on the road, road trips, playing mini hockey in the hallways. Uh, when you get knocked out of a tournament, like running around playing – tag at the hotel till like 2 a.m just stuff like that like you really kind of miss growing up and I, I think it's just um you know just those memories that you have growing up at, with those kids you play with and you know you build such a tight bond being with them all the time so I, I think that's the most special you definitely want to cherish those memories uh, before they you know go away yeah definitely and um you know the hockey world is so small, like, you never know. One day you could be working for someone you played with back when you were 15 or 16. It's it's crazy. 
And you mentioned that you grew up in, uh, you know, Michigan and Colorado, uh, among other places. What, what team did you cheer for? <laughs> um, like, like, like my favorite player. Like, I, I haven't been in one spot long enough to really have a favorite team. Um, I, I think I just really love the game. Like, um, I, I like certain players on different teams. I don't, I don't necessarily have a favorite team because I think – it's 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 the NHL, right? Like playing for anybody would be unbelievable. So I, I don't really have a favorite team, and I, I get a lot of crap for it because I'm living in Michigan, and yeah, these fans are pretty diehard. Are you excited with the NHL returning August first? Oh yeah, definitely. It's going to be interesting to see how this is going to go during uh, basically summer still, and it's going to be inter- like a weird scenario to see how it plays out. Yeah, and I'm also quite excited. I got my schedule completely cleared for that because there's five games on the slate for August 1st. It would be definitely exciting. Finally, sports are coming back. Yeah, yeah, thank God. <laughs> and with the NHL, they're actually participating in the Olympics. You know, that's huge. Yeah, that is, that is very big. Because, you know, we're getting to see a, a potential Crosby and McDavid on one line together, which would just, you know, outpower any other country, in my opinion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But obviously, being American, I got to pull for Matthews and those guys to pull through. But we'll see what happens. Well, we all know that uh, the last couple of years, uh, Canada has dominated the Olympics uh, on the men's side. On the women's side, uh, they did get lucky with the shootout in 2018, um, you know. And I think that it will be, with all these young stars in the NHL, it would be one of the most hyped up Olympics, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, and just like the way the game has changed too, like so much speed, so many goals. It's it's going to be some fun hockey to watch. You were drafted in the second round of the 2017 OHL draft. What did you do to celebrate that moment? Um, not really any celebrating, honestly. I uh, that day I went up to Flint, um, did everything there, and got home, and literally like, the next week started training again, and um, you know just trying to work on little things before I got to the next level. And with Flint, they did, or well, Plymouth moved to Flint. Uh, they have groomed great names uh, for the NHL players like Sonny Milano, James Neal, and JT Miller. What does it mean for you to be a part of that group? Oh, it's, it's extremely special. Um, you know, I've said this from day one. Uh, I, I had a commitment to Ohio State, um, and I forgave that to play in Flint. And, um, you know, it's nothing against Ohio State, but I don't regret my decision one bit. I've had some bad luck with injuries and, um, you know, but overall I'm in the best, you know, shape I've ever been in. Uh, I feel the healthiest I've ever have. And um, just the opportunity I've had in Flint is unbelievable. And um, I I really wouldn't trade that for the world. A player's career can be uh, sidelined due to injury. Like you mentioned, you've suffered through many of those has your game uh, reached the level it was before those injuries had occurred? Um, it's it's really weird, right? Like, so all of my injuries have been upper body. Um, and I, I don't know, like one injury I came back and I, I didn't feel the same for the rest of the season. My shoulder injury, I didn't play another game after that. But then last year coming back after my shoulder surgery, um, you know, obviously I felt slow a little bit, but I've never really – been able to fully establish myself so um i think this whole quarantine thing has been really good for me both mentally and physically just to you know let my body rest um you know let it fully heal you know um it and it really has made a huge difference like this is the biggest i've ever been and uh, i i feel the healthiest i ever have You've played three seasons in the OHL now, all with the Flint Firebirds. How are you able to reflect on the experience you've had so far? Uh, it's been unbelievable. Um, you know, my first two years, we didn't have the best team. And, um, you know, but we were built, we knew we were building something special. And we only knew it was a matter of time. Like, we thought it could have been the second year I was there that we really took off. And um, some things happened and it didn't go our way. But, um, you know, the core group of guys we've had there for, you know, three, four years and, um, you know, having to say goodbye to some of our 2000s is going to be, is going to be sad because, you know, they've been with us since uh, I got there. But um, overall, like the thing, the, 
I don't want to say dynasty, but just the organization we're trying to build in Flint. It's uh, you'd be stupid to say no. When you first uh, when you first arrived in Flint, did you take in a Detroit Lions game, a college football game, college hockey game? Yeah, definitely. So um, my rookie year in Flint, uh, my dad has tickets for the Pistons, and we would go all the time to Pistons games, and uh, you know that was fun to get out of the house. Like me and Captain or Cody Morgan would go. Um, but yeah, uh, I've been to one Lions game, and it was when Johnny Manziel, his rookie year, was playing in preseason, and. Uh, he didn't look the best, but it was still a fun time. Now, that is a name from the past that hopefully uh, NFL teams and players will, you know, not remember anytime soon because he had a lot of off-field uh, stuff to go through. Yeah, yeah, definitely some growing to do. <laughs> now, on your Instagram story, you do have a photo of one of the more wackier OHL jerseys. It's a full teal jersey with a palm tree. Uh, do you think that jersey is a good representation of the Flint, Michigan area? Uh, I think so. I mean, um, the movie semi pro it's, if you haven't seen, it, I guarantee you'll love it. Like go watch it. And, um, you know, it's, it's such a fun night. Like we all go on the ice for warm ups wearing sunglasses and, uh, the fans are in a good mood and it's just really fun building up to it, like shooting the promos and it's just a really fun time. And just even while you're playing the game, you're still like, oh, wow, like we're the Flint Tropics tonight. Like it, it's a really cool feeling. Would you be able to tell me the story of how your first goal was scored? Yeah, that's uh, I think that's the most special goal I've ever scored in my hockey career. Um, it was in October and we we're during the breast cancer game. And uh, my mom had breast cancer currently at that time. And uh, she was on, I believe, her second year battling it. And um, she was starting to get better. And like that was right around the time she started to turn. But um, it was going into the third period. Well, it was in the third period. And um, I think we were up 3 1 or something like that. And uh, I got the puck on the power play and <laughs> it went in. And I, I, that's the best feeling of my life. And just to be able to do that with my mom there. And, you know, I did the opening face off with her. And it was, it was a really special moment for me. Do you still have that puck with you today? Yeah, I actually gave it to my mom. That's good. Yeah, that that's a great, uh, you know, eh, when you're scoring that goal uh, with your circumstances, that's huge, you know. And I obviously have never felt what it's like with uh, what you have just felt. Uh, so obviously that huge, that goal must have been very huge for you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, I scored my only other one this year, but. Like I said, um, I've never really been able to establish myself. So just to be able to be in the position I am now, like I used to be really worried and just, you know, almost overthink about everything. But, you know, I, I know the player I am and I know the player I'm going to be. And, um, you know, just to have this time to get healthy again, it's it's going to do a lot for me. Do you serve as a mentor to the rookies? Yeah, um, definitely. I uh, it, it was a little bit different this year just because, you know, we had such a tight knit group. Um, you know, we don't in Flint, we don't believe in hazing and, um, all that kind of just dumb stuff. Like, you know, in Flint, we want to build something where, you know, whether you're 20 years old or 15 years old, that you feel special and that, you know, you're welcome to the team. And I think, I, I, I think everyone's done a great job with that. Our coaching staff, you know, our older guys, and it's really cool to see. You mentioned that, you know, Flint is on the rise to making the playoffs and to getting better success, but, you know, they missed the playoffs the last couple of seasons. What can you do yourself to help them reach the postseason? Yeah, so, um, you know, like I said, I, I haven't played a full season. And, um, you know, I I think I can bring something special to the table. Um, I'm a really good defensive player. That's probably the best side of my game. And, Right now, I'm just working on, you know, my speed, my agility, my offense, getting stronger, my shot better. And, um, you know, I, I really want to turn the table this year and uh, I'm going to do everything it takes for the team. And um, it, it feels really cool to say that, too, just because, you know, through all these injuries, they've they've all had my back and no one's really given up on me. So, you know, I I, <laughs> I just feel it coming that I'm going to pay them back. And like you mentioned, you want to work on your offensive game. Do you ever watch a defenseman in the NHL and take tips from their highlights? Yeah, definitely. Um, someone I've been watching a lot is Seth Jones. 
he played for one of my coaches in Colorado and, um, you know, he's a bigger guy like me. Um, you know, same kind of story. doesn't come from a big hockey place. And, uh, it's, it's been cool to watch him kind of develop and grow up as a player. Um, guys like Shea Weber too. Uh, you know, I, I don't have quite the shot he does, but I just like the way he plays the game, moves the puck. Um, small guys like Chris Letang, the way they can move the puck and, I guess, finagle their way out of situations too, stuff like that. So uh, I like to pick and pull. I don't have – it's kind of weird to say I don't have one role model right now, but that's just because the game has changed so much and I want to just pick and pull from certain players. You guys were projected to go up against the Windsor Spitfires in this year's playoffs. Uh, do you have any playoff superstitions? Um, I'm trying to think back to the last time I was playing playoff games, uh, in triple a, whoever was playing music, the game we won had to keep playing it. Um, and then we had some guys that, uh, there's this like pre-workout called C4. And we had some guys that would take like four scoops, just so unhealthy, but we kept winning. So they just kept doing it. And we won like the team won five straight championships. I was with the team for three. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, every junior player uh, dreams of making the Memorial Cup. What, what would it mean for you making uh, making the Memorial Cup? I, I probably wouldn't even have the words to describe it, honestly. Um, growing up in New Mexico, you know, the best thing for me was the WSHL. I moved to Colorado and then I found out about the NOL and then the USHL. And then I thought college would be the best option. And then, you know, as I started watching, like, you know, more of those guys come up, like uh, Nathan McKinnon, Connor McDavid. I was like, the OHL is, like, really wow, you know. So um, I didn't start learning about it about till a year or two before I signed and started playing. So it, it was just crazy. And, um, you know, I always watched the history of, like, the Memorial Cups. And when it was at Windsor, me and my dad got to go. So that was really cool. But that's it. That and the Stanley Cup is probably the hardest trophy in hockey to win. And I think even just going there would be a once in a lifetime surreal experience. What would be a typical game day for you? Uh, at the Memorial Cup or just in general? Just in general during the season. <laughs> yeah. So um, I wake up around nine. Usually we have to be at the rink at 10 for just morning club. Um, you know, you can hot tub, cold tub, sometimes skate. Um, some guys like to get a bike ride in, you know, just kind of get your body feeling right. And then I usually go home. Um, sometimes I'll grab like a protein shake and like a, a performance tea and I'll save the tea for when I'm driving to the rink later, but I'll go home and then, um, watch Netflix or play Xbox for about an hour and then eat my pregame at like, mm, like two 30 nap till four. Uh, get ready at four and head to the rink, usually at the rink, like four 45. Uh, and then, you know, I change into my off ice gear and just mentally prepare and go through video and all that stuff. You mentioned that you play Xbox. Do you play with your teammates? Um, usually not on a game day. No, uh, they all play PlayStation, but a couple of them have Xbox, but on game days, I, uh, I just kind of play like rocket league or, you know, just whatever to keep my mind out of the out of the game and before I have to really dial it in. How busy would you say you are during the off season, or how do you keep busy? <laughs> yeah, so I, I started to kind of go insane during quarantine. Um, you know, usually I'm working out and training for like five, six hours a day. So, and you know, I'm in the car for two hours a day minimum. So, um, I start. I definitely started to go stir crazy, and um, you know, now I could skate. I can skate every day. I'm choosing not to right now just because, you know, it's still midsummer. And um, once you get into like peak condition, you can't really keep that for a long, long time. So I'm going to wait till later on in the summer to really fully be in my best condition. Um, but right now it's just lifting and skating. And I lift five days a week. Uh, I play soccer on Saturdays um, and skate every other day. What would you say has been the toughest challenge for you this season? Probably um, noticing the step back from my injuries. Um, you know, me, I've always been the hardest critic on myself. Like, um, you know, I, 
I'm someone who's never really satisfied. And, um, you know, so when I started noticing like, you know, okay, I may have lost a step here. I may have lost a step there. Uh, it was definitely hard. And then getting hurt again, it, it was, it was a really big dagger. And, um, you know, just to have that, um, you know, experience and, um, just grit to keep battling through it's uh it's made me very strong for you know if i get drafted this year great if i don't great like uh whatever team i end up with one day is going to be extremely thankful for what i went through is there a team in specific that was really hard to play against this year um i'd say like teams like windsor um you know they didn't really they had good like really good hockey players but they never really had a star stud they were just solid throughout and um if you wanted to win and in, in windsor in london you know you you really had to go to war and every guy had to bring their a game and uh, you know i think the best game i've ever seen us play in flint we were in london and we beat uh on a friday night at the bud we beat london like 6-1 and that was just like that's when we knew this year we were like wow like we're a power and uh that was, that was a really cool feeling in 42 games this season for you, you had uh, three points. Uh, did you set any goals for yourself before the season? No. Um, you know, I, I knew this coming into this year, it was going to be, um, you know, an uphill battle for me just because um, you know, I, I was in a sling for four months and I really only got like two solid months of summer training in. And so I knew this year it was just going to be, you know, get a feel back for the game, you know, remember what you used to be, remember how you could do this, that, and ultimately just keep building off where, where I was at. Because, you know, at the end of the day, uh, if I make it to the NHL at 20, great. If I make it to the NHL at 24, it doesn't matter. Like, I just want to make it one day. And, uh, you know, it, it takes a lot to keep battling through that. Like you mentioned, you were recruited by Ohio State. Uh, was it, you know, Connor McDavid and, and the Nathan McKinnons that uh, influenced you to stay with the OHL? Um. You know, I've always been a bigger kid and, um, you know, I've always been a lot stronger than a lot of kids and, uh, you know, college, great hockey. Um, you know, I have nothing against it, but you know, the way I see my game growing and who I want to become as a player, um, I, I, I become better when I get put into game situations where I learn, I'm not the type of player that, you know, I'm going to need the extra time in the weight room, the extra practice, uh, like you get with college hockey. So me choosing the OHL, I, I, I really loved Flint and I really wanted to start playing an NHL style game. What benefits, uh, does the OHL add to your game? Uh, definitely the speed, uh, though, you know, like the way teams move the puck and, um, you know, the IQ you play against, like one night you'll be playing against, uh, you know, my rookie year. Uh, first game, not first game, but like uh, first time in London, starting against Max Jones. Uh, I, I can't remember if Cliff Pooh was on the team. Guys like that. And then the next night we're playing in uh, Sarnia against uh, like Rimshaw, Cairo, those guys. And I'm just, I'm walking out of the tunnel thinking I'm playing NHL 17, like be a pro mode. It, it, it was ridiculous. Now, CHO does have their own uh, hockey cards. Uh, how cool would it be for you to get your own hockey card one day? Yeah, Flint actually did them this year, so I, I got to get one of those. and uh, <laughs> It's really cool. Like uh, Me and my dad growing up, we would always collect sports cards and memorabilia. So like now looking back, like signing posters, signing autographs, signing kids' pucks, hats, like shirts, like, it, it, it's ridiculous. Like, I never thought like little seven year old me that I would be doing this for another kid one day. So it's definitely humbling. And another great thing about the OHL or the CHL in general is that there's teddy bear toss games. Uh, have you been a part of one? <laughs> no, I've been hurt every teddy bear toss game. So uh, hopefully this year I'll play in one. Maybe I'll score a goal if I'm lucky. <laughs> Yeah, that is an unfortunate circumstance that you're in because, you know, if the trend is unfortunately correct, you'd seem to be injured for the next one. Yeah, well, hopefully this is uh, this is the changing time and um, I'm done with the injuries. If you were to get the chance, uh, what would be your go-to shootout move? 
Um, <laughs> I change it up so much. Uh, you know, sometimes in practice, if I'm feeling myself, I'll do like a magic wand and backhand it. Sometimes I'll score. I'll do like the one hand tap or um, sometimes I'll shoot. Like I think <laughs> I'm kind of someone who goes with the flow. So uh, depending on like what I see from the goalie is probably what I'll pick. But I'll have a general idea going into it. And with this whole coronavirus situation has uh, posed teams uh, with the challenge of not having fans in the stands. Uh, what's your uh, thoughts on that? Do you expect fans in the stands for next season? Um, I really have no idea what to expect. Um, this, this is just such a crazy time. Like, um, you know, I think if there are going to be fans, we may see a reduced schedule or um, there's going to there's going to be something that has to happen. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to speak on the league's behalf because I have no idea what's going on. But, um, you know, right now the plan is to start on time and uh, hopefully we can start on time and get back to doing what we do best. Well, with, uh, you know, with the NFL, they have issued a statement to teams where they can set their own fan capacity. Uh, I believe I read in the news that the Dolphins are actually holding a 25% capacity at their home games with everyone wearing face coverings. Uh, if fans don't play, how will that impact your game? Um, you know, I don't, I think it'll be interesting. I think us and Flint, I think we'd be okay just because, um, you know, we've had some tough years and we haven't been able to pull together the best crowds just because we haven't been the best team. So I think now that we really have the team that can compete and win, I think we'll have definitely an advantage over teams like London who need their 10,000 and um, teams like Windsor who need their fans. And it, it, it'll be an interesting season. Yeah. The butt is always rocking. Whenever I go to see London night games, that, that uh, arena is definitely packed to the brim. Yeah. And who would you say was your favorite uh, roommate to uh, road with on road trips this year? <laughs> uh, so I roomed with uh, Connor Roberts and Cody Morgan, and uh, they're both great guys. Like I love them, and uh, you know they're 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 brothers to me. So um, you know <laughs> you you make so many memories with those guys on the road, and it's just stuff you can't trade for the world. Last question here on the podcast. Marcus, do you have uh, any advice for aspiring hockey players that may look up to you one day? Definitely. Um, you know, don't listen to people. Uh, you can be told you're fat, you're slow, uh, you know, you don't come from a hockey market. Don't listen to anyone. You know, when you want to do something, like, all it takes is a little mindset, and you just keep building off of it. Like like I said, I didn't grow up in the best hockey market. I, I don't have the best genetics. Uh, I wasn't born a hockey player. Um, in fact, my dad was really mad when I wanted to play hockey because he played pro soccer. So I think, you know, when you find that passion inside yourself, just just let it take over. Um, you know, dedicate yourself. Like, looking back at the years, hockey has ran my life. And, um, you know, some kids, they say they may regret it, but there's not a second, there's not anything in this world I wouldn't trade for a second of that for. And, um, you know, when you accomplish those things, like, and you look back at, you know, the nights you were crying in your closet or uh, the nights you just didn't want to move because you felt you had a bad game or the nights you felt terrible about yourself as a person because you played bad or you let a goal in, like, you know, it's such a long marathon that, you know, you're going to see kids who are superstars when they're eight years old and then fade away. So just trust the process and just, believe in yourself you don't need someone else to believe in you and I think that's something I learned a lot over the years that it's going to be just you and that's all you need you're going to have people who support you you're going to have people who hate you but listen to yourself trust yourself and just believe in yourself all right well I'd like to thank Flint Fibridge defenseman Marcus Gretz for joining me on today's podcast thank you again yeah thank you